So we're gonna pull the covers off this little drill unit here and see what it's all about when the lights get bright. We're talking Super Bowl Sunday bright. But before we get rolling, a huge thanks to Festool Canada. I reached out to them to see if they wanted to send me something <laughs> that I could review and then give away. So I'll be damned, <laughs> they sent me this sweet drill here. Um, it's the drill, two four amp batteries, the charger, and these new Sustainer 3 cases. So thanks Festool Canada. So I've got this video and then one more video where we're gonna put this thing into a death match with the Milwaukee M18 fuel drill and the Makita subcompact brushless. And then at the end of that video, I will give this away. Um, there's not gonna be really a contest or anything. Basically, if you subscribe to the channel, and you engage in the comments sooner or later. I'm hoping that I can give something to everybody. All right, let's get this baby rolling. So there's five key things that I really like about this drill. There's three things that are pretty dislikey that I'm not really happy about. And then I'll answer the question, would I actually buy this drill kit for $299 American with my own money? So the ergonomics and design of this drill, they're 10 out of 10. This thing is a beauty. Uh, the balancing on this, like hold this thing in your hand and it is just perfectly balanced. If you've watched the channel, you know that I value the ergonomics a ton and all the tools that I review. Yeah, the balance on this thing is just, like even if you hang this thing on your pocket, it just hangs perfectly square. Um, the weighting is perfect. It feels great in your hand. They've got some nice rubberized bits here on the handle, just a perfect grip. Um, your, trigger, your trigger finger sits comfortably. The forward reverse is just a standard push button. So just to get an idea of the weight for context, this thing is about a thousand grams. This is about 1800 grams. And then if we look at the big Milwaukee M18 fuel drill, this thing's about 2200 grams. So almost 400 grams more than the Fest tool drill. The trigger modulation and the overall smoothness, smoothness of this drill is pretty superb. And what I mean by that is you can get super fine control with this trigger here. It's just very sensitive and it has a nice feel to it. So if you're doing some fine work, this is a huge bonus to have a nice trigger. Um, and then the smoothness of this drill, let's have a little demonstration here. Like say you're putting in some two and a half inch wood screws, you pop this on there, you fire it up. It's just a smooth running drill, right? And you contrast that to the old Milwaukee K, the RPM's higher, the trigger modulation, and it's just not nearly as smooth. You throw the screw on there. And you know, it's just, this is more of a wild beast and this is more just kind of an elegant drill. So yeah, like if you're gonna be a plumber or a framer and you're wanting to hog out some big holes, this is your cat right here. But if you're a finishing carpenter, um, cabinet installer, woodworker, yeah, the refinement on this drill is very appreciated. The clutch. The clutch on this drill is out of bounds. I've never really seen a drill like this before. It's got 25 settings. It's got some type of an electronic clutch. This is the sound it makes when it engages. So it just goes to 25 different settings. And I don't know, drills that I've used in the past, the clutch is never reliable. It works to a certain extent, but this is like, check this out. We're gonna put some inch and an eighth screws into some melamine cabinet material. I've got a two by four underneath here. Set this thing to 17. And yeah, I haven't seen this before. You just all day putting screws in just barely sinking them through the edge here. And the consistency is shocking. <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah, so you can see all these are just set to the exact same depth. I've never really seen that in a drill. And to be honest, like I do use the clutch setting on my little Festool CXS. Uh, it works great. I use it when I'm putting on cabinet knobs just so I don't strip them out. But yeah, to be honest, I've never seen a clutch that, that works this well. And it kind of opens up the possibility to use it for different things that I maybe never considered in the past just because the clutches on most drills are pretty terrible. The case. 
The sustainer cases that these tools come in are pretty awesome. I'm a big fan of the sustainer. I have, I don't know, dozens of them. That's what I put all my tools in. And now the new sustainer three cases that they've come out with have um, a couple of nice features that the old sustainers don't. Um, the little latches here, feels like they have a little more kind of a positive snap in the different spots that they can go into. And then the really cool thing here with these new cases, I mean, they did actually add this little handle. So if you want to carry it like a briefcase, that's cool. The old ones don't have that. But the really cool thing is these little slots that they put on the side now. And now they have this little cleaning system that you can, like for your van or your workshop, you can just build a big tower, throw the cleats in there, and then they all clip in and out individually. And then, yeah, one of the things that I love about these sustainer cases as well that you don't really get on any of the other uh, toolbox systems out there is if you want to get into one of these boxes, all you have to do so you put your foot on this little nut right at the bottom, the little cleat, and then you can get into any box you want. The little latches just spin around. So if you wanna swoop this one over here, it locks on there and you can open up any case that you want. So it's super handy. You can build yourself a giant tower. I use these cases, I do two towers and then I have a little workbench that sits on top of them. And as well for my truck, the workbench flips over and they all slide into there upside down. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the sustainer case. So it's a nice bonus that they throw in a $75 sustainer in a $299 drill kit. The battery platform. Now we're not talking Milwaukee M18 where there's over 7 million choices and tools, but all the uh, 18 volt Festool stuff are dimes. There's some beautiful tools in there. I don't own any of them, but I've been eyeballing them very seriously. There's the track saw, which is beautiful. Uh, the jigsaw, man, I've been, <laughs> I've been seriously thinking about that jigsaw. If I do end up getting into the Festool 18 volt lineup, I would definitely grab that jigsaw. The current jigsaw that I have right now is this Makita brushless. This is probably one of my least favorite tools of all time. I hate this tool. It just, it has like this electronic thing that adjusts the speed and you can't, it has no trigger modulation. It's just on or off and then it just jumps up speed as you get into a harder cut and I hate it. The blade wanders all over the place. I cannot highly not recommend this anymore. I cannot. I cannot offer a stronger recommendation than to never buy this brushless Makita jigsaw. <laughs> it's terrible. But yeah, if you're gonna get into the platform, the drill is not a bad little way. $299, you get the drill, you get two four amp batteries and the charger. The batteries are about 120 bucks a piece American, so that's 240 bucks. 75 bucks for the charger. That's pretty much the price right there. You get the $75 sustainer and yeah, the drill for that $2.99 price. So it's not all chocolate covered walnuts and cotton candy. There's three things that I really don't like about this drill. Yeah, so the switch on the top here that switches in between drilling and screwing is what we like to call in the business non-premium. <laughs> now what I mean by that is it just, there's no real positive stop in between the two. I took this thing apart and it's just a little tiny little metal spring with this little plastic um, switch plate here. It just doesn't really feel that great. It's kind of a cheap feel to it. And what really bothers me about that is when I was testing the drill out and using it, you put it into drill, you're gonna do something heavy duty. And like I had showed before with the ergonomics, I like that you can put your hand on there in a nice position. But what happened to me a few times is I put my hand on there and it switches it over into screw mode, which engages the clutch, which is not really what you wanna do when you're using a six inch hole saw or a bigger bit because it's just gonna clutch it out and it's annoying. <laughs> so yeah, it happened twice. Now this is kind of a stupid thing, a silly thing to not like, but I just find it kind of annoying. There's a little metal piece on this chuck. You hear that? So when you're using this drill, I'll put it by the microphone. It makes that little sound all the time. And it's kind of annoying. It's like something falling off the drill, which could be handy if you wanted to get your hand right on the end of the chuck and hold it down. 
for a little more precision on certain things, but it's kind of annoying. And then the one thing that I really don't like about this drill is the fixed chuck. Now this T18 3E is the exact same drill as the T18 3 that comes with all the removable chucks. It comes with four different options. You can get the J-Cubs, the offset, the right angle, and the Centrotech chuck. And that would be super handy because you could have all different bits in there. Like my little CXS has the exact same type of system that the T18 has, where you can just remove the different chucks. It has a Jacobs chuck, the nice little right angle. I don't think you can get an offset for this one, but you can with the regular T18 drill. It comes with all the different chucks, but Festool decided to make this as more of an entry level drill and it comes with a fixed Jacobs chuck, which is pretty similar to other drills. And yet it's not that this is a bad chuck or the drill isn't nice. It's just kind of a bit of a weird feeling knowing that you potentially could clip on four awesome chucks onto here. So would I purchase this $299 T18 3E kit with my own money? At 299 bucks, it's not really that much different than say the Milwaukee at 279. So it is fairly attractive. I would definitely think about this drill if I was getting into that jigsaw or the oscillating tool or even the track saw. This would go nicely with that. That being said, I'd probably be more inclined to get the T18 with the different removable chucks. That way, like in a workshop scenario or installing cabinets, the removable chucks, like I could see myself if my Makita drill burns up and uh, this old, this old drill is like five, six years old. If this thing kicks the bed, I could see myself getting the T18 with the different chucks and just kind of replacing both these things. Like it's super nice to have a nice little lightweight drill, but this thing's so well balanced and the clip is so handy and nice that I could see myself just using this in place of the two other drills that I currently use. But like I said, I'd probably end up getting the one with the removable chucks. And if you want to see how this thing stands up in a cage match against the Milwaukee Fuel and the Makita Subcompact, check out this video right up here. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you over there. <coughs>